Wolong Fallen Dynasty came out of nowhere. I didn't even know this game was releasing and my homies let me know about it. And I was like, Team Ninja. I was very intrigued. I just got through playing Ninja Gaiden for the first time, had an absolute blast. I love Strangers of Paradise. I have a whole bunch of respect for Team Ninja. And I was like, when was this announced? So anyways, I purchased the game and was waiting for it to come out, and I expected it to be a lot like Strangers of Paradise, their last game. And there was one big issue with that game. It was just combat and bosses. Now for this review, I'm going to break it up into sections, but the main point with this video I want to bring is that a Souls-like does not have to just be combat and bosses. And I think Wo Long finally broke that mold. Now, Strangers of Paradise did have a story, but it left a lot to be desired, and the level design I had a huge issue with. It really just felt like Final Fantasy decorated hallways. There was absolutely no exploration or variety. The combat system was literally 10 out of 10, and the boss design was some of the best of that year. But without that level design or anything, I just hop on that game for some combat, and that's it. This goes for a lot of Souls-likes, even the one Thymesia that I just reviewed, that game had some level design issues, and mostly banked on its combat, and that is fine, but I think Souls-likes could do a lot more, considering FromSoft games have some of the best exploration I've played in gaming, so it's like, why do all these Souls games just prioritize combat, like that's not the entirety of a Souls game. So now let's talk about Wo Long Fallen Dynasty and see what they did to change up the formula. I think this might be my favorite combat system from a Souls-like, not from FromSoft, and also my favorite combat system from Team Ninja so far, and I really love the Strangers of Paradise combat system, so that's pretty high up there to get past that. Now what's so fun about it is you can parry anything. So when you click circle, you're going to do a really fast parry. And if you double click it, you'll dodge. But you don't dodge much in this game. You're pretty much going to be up in the enemy's face parrying them the whole time. It's a lot more like Sekiro than any other Souls game. Now, you could parry anything. And that even means the red glowing super attacks enemies throw at you. These are always unblockable. In a Souls game, an action RPG, no matter what it is, you usually have to dodge out of the way of these. It usually signals, hey, red attacks you cannot block but this game flips it on its head red attacks are your best friend if you could parry those you're going to knock so much spirit onto their bar which is basically their stagger meter like the one in sekiro if you get their spirit fully locked you're gonna be able to do an execution just like if you were to take their hp down this makes combat really fast really aggressive and you pretty much have player control the entirety of the time now some people have complained this has made the game easier and now while it is easier than other souls likes it is not easy by any means this game is still harder than most action rpgs out there and someone who doesn't play these games will get their ass whooped a handful of times and have to learn i actually think the difficulty complaints are absolutely ridiculous you still can't choose your difficulty option there's ways to lose your xp this game is not easy by any means and the challenge factor is not the sole reason souls games are good you don't need it brutally hard the entire way of the story for it to mean something but yeah, combat is fantastic. It's super fast, smooth. It actually reminds me of Ninja Gaiden with its movement. Like, I appreciate the jump button so much. And you could hop around, do assassinations. I love just running around in this game. Aside from your regular attacks, you could do special martial arts that are like special abilities, special attacks that you normally see in action games, and you have your spells that you could use, and building your character in this game is really fun, because whenever you level up, you're leveling up an element, and each of these elements have different stats that will level up. I went with fire, and I went over this in my combat guide, if anyone needs that guide, I will link it here. But on that combat guide, I talk about how you want to pick an element and just go full ham with it. So my fire was at like level 90 and I had 10 points and other stuff. My fire abilities were outrageous and you could go change those stats at any time in the hub. You could just go swap it to water, earth, whatever you want. So there's lots of build variety in this game and using spells and specials are all super fun. Enemy variety was good too, but it mostly came in the bosses, because sometimes you'd see repeats of mini bosses or regular enemies, but it wasn't enough to ever annoy me, and there was so much boss variety that I was really happy about that, and the game was pretty girthy. I finished at around close to 50 hours, and that's good for a Souls-like. 
But yeah, we all expected the combat to be good in this game, and I want to get onto the points that I found very fantastic about this game. So here's the number one reason why this game was so fun to me, surprised me, and why I'm happy it actually did something different instead of just combat and bosses. So there's a number on your screen at all times called your morale, and there's these flags you're going to get across the map. Each of these flags are your bonfires, but the fun thing about these flags is the big ones are your main bonfires. You could level up there. It'll obviously give you all your healing back and things like that. And then there's these smaller flags. If you go find these, it'll heal up you and your teammates and it will raise your morale. The higher your morale, the more damage you're going to do and basically less damage you're going to take. Now, this is really fun because they did not put the mini flags in dumb areas. Like they didn't just put it around a corner or in your line of sight. No, you actually have to go explore and find these. And sometimes you're low on health, cannot find a big flag. So when you come across a mini one for exploring, it's a fantastic reward for your efforts. I can't tell you how much fun I had looking for all these flags the completionist in me was going crazy and i would finish a level sometimes missing a flag or two and i'm like dude i went everywhere i sniffed every corner of this map where are the flags and it was really fun to find some of them there were some shortcuts there were some winding pathways with verticality i thought it was really really fun now it's not extravagant by any means like the best level design i've seen but to have this on the side of amazing combat amazing bosses I loved it so much and there was a lot of different areas you didn't go to the same area over and over constantly lots of different variety in the areas and exploring them was fun almost every single time you had a couple shitter levels of course but I want to say 95% of the levels I had a blast exploring and fighting in of course, getting all the flags on PlayStation is tied to getting the Platinum Trophy as well, so there's a whole bunch of reasons to go for these flags. It's a whole bunch of fun, and the morale flag idea they had, I thought was brilliant. I was so scared that I was going to go and just see hallways of enemies up into a boss, but I was actually proven completely wrong. This game has decent level design, good ideas and plenty of content to tackle without buying DLC or the season pass. There is a season pass, but I finished this game and was like, yeah, that was a full product. So Wolong Fallen Dynasty is more like Sekiro where it has cutscenes, a lot of voice acting, more characters, and this is set in the dark fantasy version of the Three Kingdoms of China, which is actually an amazing setting. So going through these areas and seeing the story beats was definitely very interesting. Now some of the cutscenes did not hit and some of the characters, especially in the English dub, just sounded way off to where it was even funny, but the story is very welcome, just the fact that we have it here and if you have played dynasty warriors you're basically going through and meeting all your homies from the dynasty warrior games and recruiting them and they get to fight alongside you with a lot of their original voice actors so that is really cool i have not played dynasty warriors but even going through this and knowing each of these characters are from those dynasty warrior games i was like this is so awesome it was super cool fighting Lu Bu and seeing Hong Ching and learning her character, and there was a lot of fun to the game's story. I was pleased with it. A lot of the cutscenes definitely looked off and it ruined it, but I'm going to get into that into the next section. But if you want to see that Three Kingdoms period of China, this game does it pretty damn well. Now, you're basically playing as a no-name soldier. You create them in the character creator, and I'm never a super fan of this, but it is what it is. You're a silent pro tag, and the character creator at least is pretty decent. If you love this type of stuff, it might be underwhelming, but for me, I had plenty of stuff to mess around with to make a cool character. So unfortunately, Wolong Fallen Dynasty isn't perfect, and the biggest issue with this game is the way its presentation shows, and that has to do with its graphics, its engine, and its performance. So on PS5, Performance is pretty dang good, actually, in some areas. <laughs> so sometimes the game will run great. Sometimes it'll run like ass. Sometimes the game looks great. Sometimes the game looks like ass. 
there's a weird inconsistency with the way the game presents itself and i really don't like it sometimes it's really immersive and the graphics look great other times the cutscenes look really old or the frame rate will just tank some levels get hit harder than others and when you do a bunch of particle effects or abilities the frame rate will more so tank on playstation 5 the graphics mode will actually hold 60 fps in the resolution mode for a little bit but then just starts getting all wonky the fps mode though unfortunately doesn't hold 60 fps the entirety of the time but it's pretty dang close the worst part about this though is none of this seems necessary team ninja's engine needs a change like this just looks old and unstable like it's being held together with duct tape the fact that strangers of paradise was like this and now wo long is like this the engine just needs a change or some better optimization because i know the pc port also had some issues and it just rings of unstable and i wish it wasn't like this because the game is so damn good i had such a good time with it but the only time was when my eyes were just looking at some disgusting environmental details or whatever it was the frame rate was tanking during a fight but yeah not the biggest issues in the world it doesn't like affect the actual gameplay but your immersion might get affected i don't like how unstable the entirety of the engine is Wo Long Fallen Dynasty genuinely surprised me and I think it's my favorite game of the year so far. The combat system was just incredibly fun. I love the level design and the idea of the flags and morality. The story was interesting and the characters are fun. This game is honestly a decent package and I would recommend it full price if you are a Souls fan or love action RPGs or if you're a Dynasty Warriors fan. This is one of Team Ninja's best, and it just shows how much an amazing combat system can be enhanced when it's accompanied by great level design. I hope you guys enjoyed my Wo Long Fallen Dynasty review. If you did, make sure to leave a like and definitely subscribe if you want to look forward to more of my upcoming videos. I really appreciate you guys, and as always, have the most fantastic day. I will see you soon. Peace.